What's up guys, Gems here, and if you've been playing Roblox for over four years now, there's a high chance you've probably heard the term personal server before. Today, I'll be talking about this feature, its removal, and my thoughts on it. As always, if you end up enjoying this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I have a Discord server I'll be linking in a pinned comment and in the description. And I'm also doing a Q&A soon, so questions would be greatly appreciated. Let's get back into the video. So at the 2011 Roblox Rally, a new feature was announced, Personal Servers, and on November 11th, 2011, it was finally added into the game. Personal Servers were not only intended to make building in Roblox better, but also more enjoyable. You could select who can build and who couldn't, add in more players and builds than in games while having less lag, and other features. The personal servers were not split into servers themselves, like places are, but instead would use a single auto-saving place. Server security would actually be better, with ban lists and different permission ranks. I really liked these features. A Roblox developer going by the name of Goosehonk has actually managed to bring back the auto-saving feature and the build tools, but its popularity is minuscule compared to what it was back then, and the ranking system is non-existent. One criticism many players had with the servers were griefing. A member of your server could turn on you and grief it. People did grief servers a lot when they were a thing. But there were easy ways to prevent and fix this. The issue was a piece of cake. 1. Only give out building permissions to users you really trust. 2. Ban the user who griefs the world. And 3. Set the world back to a previously ungriefed version, something which was basically a reverse card the autosave would let you do although not necessarily specific to build servers themselves. What I think really brought the whole thing to life were the new broken and outdated build tools. So if you didn't already know, there were a lot of different gears back then that you could use to build. Here, I'm going to talk about the main building tools and gears, along with a few others. The Midas Glove. A glove that was awarded to players that purchased Outrageous Builders Club. When used, it would turn nearby objects into gold. I don't really see a practical use for this, unless you are literally making a golden building. Paint Bucket This gear is the only building tool still available for purchase today. It allows the user to choose from a variety of colors to paint parts as. Players typically use it for one of two reasons, either to spread mass vandalism or to paint parts of their builds. Stamper Tool this item would allow you to build a variety of different things, by letting you scale voxel terrain, make weapon spawners, blocky houses, cars, and just about anything else in between. One of my favorite features are the wiring aspects of it, which I'll talk about later. I really like the stamper tool, as it's not complex while at the same time letting you build good looking structures. Many players find it similar to Minecraft's creative menu and blocky builds, something which I also like. Delete tool. A hammer that could be used to delete models and specific parts of models, as well as ungrouping things. Many players attempted to use this to grief others' build servers, but as I mentioned earlier, the server could have easily just been brought back to a previous version. Clone Part A tool which could be used to clone models and parts. I personally found this tool really helpful for when I made a block that wasn't in the stamper tool and needed to reuse it. Wiring tool. As you saw earlier, I mentioned something called wiring. Wiring was pretty much Roblox's version of redstone. I found wiring to be really enjoyable. It can be used to make different vehicles, spinners that you could ride on, rockets, conveyor belts, light shows, radios, and many, many more things. I might make a showcase on the stamper tool's functionalities in the future. Configure tool. This item will let you change the properties of certain blocks and items in the stamper tool. Some of these items were wired ones, while others were not. For example, the configurable light didn't require wires and could be configured, while the motor could be configured but required wires to be turned on. This tool really complements wired builds in my opinion. Model Dragger. This tool would allow you to drag parts and models. Color Paintbrush. This would allow you to color objects, but not to the extent that the paint bucket can. Pretty much a lighter version of that. 
rotate tool. I really couldn't find much information on this item, as not only is it off sale, but the Roblox account is the only owner and the wiki page gives no description for it. I'm just going to assume, as the name implies, that it lets you rotate things. Material tool. This would let you change the material of objects you were building with. Very useful indeed. Surface tool. It's like the material tool, but instead of changing the material of a part, it would let you change the surface. Property tool. A collection of a lot of the previously mentioned items. I couldn't find a name for this tool, so I'm just going to call it the property tool. It would allow you to drag parts, change their transparency, scale them, change the surface, the material, and even paint them using the short list of colors that the color tool has. A trusty and well-made multi-tool for experienced builders. Build insert. This is even more mysterious than the rotate tool is, as I really don't know what it would do, but you can kind of get a good guess. Or better yet, how would it do it? I'm not sure if it would let you upload models from a file, take them from the toolbox or your inventory or something similar. As far as I know, those are all of the building tools. If you didn't already know, I was and still am a huge fan of personal building servers. And with the new scripts made by developers like Goosehonk, I really think personal build servers can make a comeback if they manage to get popular. So yeah guys, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Join the Discord server if you want to, and I'm doing a Q&A so some questions would be greatly appreciated. That's episode 2 of Removed Roblox Features, and I'll see you on the next one.